Hello guys, welcome to Tutorials Point. Uh, we are in the middle of video lecture where we are studying about Android application development. Till now we have seen uh, the parts of Android like what is Android, what, are, what is Android Studio. In the last lecture we covered about the components of Android. This lecture is focused on the very important file or the starting block of Android. We call it the Android Manifest file. Android Manifest file is the exit name we have to mention it in a similar way every time when we are making this file. And this file is already added into our application. It should be present in the SRC, in the main, in here. This file is the Android Manifest.xml file. This file would be having all the components as I've already told you that, you know, like your activity, your resources, everything is there that, that is there in the application is the so this is a typical file if you would have seen your own application the hello world application that you have made this file would be having such a architecture such a structure now what are all these things let's go into them one by one and see what are all these things so the android manifest.xml is having an xml tag which is the starting point of the application and tells a version of xml that is that it's using then it's having under the manifest file, it is defining the XML name schema of Android as this. Then is the package. This file information package is a very important part of an Android application. If you have ever been into your uh, application manager and then you would have seen that the package defines or identifies your application. Your application can have only one package. Which by this I mean that say if I'm having three applications, then they need to have different packages because in Android package is the unique identifier of the application. No two applications can have the same package. Then is the application. Application means it's a starting tag of an application. By, by this I mean that the application is starting from here and from here I would be having all the information for the application in this part. So let's see what all the application tag has. Application tag is having an icon. Icon is something in the MIP map as IC launcher. This means that under the MIP map folder, I think you can recall where was MIP map folder. MIP map folder was in SRC main uh, RES folder. The MIP map is a resource and it's in the RES or the resource folder. So this is the icon and this icon looks something like this. You can call it as the preview of the icon. So whenever you are uh, running your application from the application drawer, this would be shown to you. Then the label. By label, I mean what is the application all about or what's, uh, how do I, what's the label on the top of the application? How do I identify the application? These all things are defined by the label. Then I'm having the theme of the application. And after this, I'm having the activity. Now, if you remember what was activity, activity was that UI component of the application that you are seeing, right? Now, whenever I'm launching an application, there can be say 20 activities in the application. How does the application or how does the app gets to know how do I start or which activity to call first? This is done using the launcher. The launcher is a tag of the category filter. This is having the capacity to launch. Now this launcher would be calling this activity. So from manifest, I look for launcher. From manifest, I look launcher. From launcher, I go to the main activity. Now this activity would be launched first. So it's very clear, I can't have two launches in one, one, one manifest file, right? Now in this one would be the, uh, this activity would be launched. As soon as it launches the application, this activity, this activity takes up the task. It calls the UI or the XML file that I want to call. Now, let, now let's look what all components or what all tags can be there in a, in a manifest file. This is a normal tag or sequence of the manifest file. The manifest file starts with the manifest. After this, it is having these permissions. Then the uses SDK. Don't worry, I will be explaining you just now. Just give me a second. Then the compatible screens, the application that we have seen and activity. Now let's see what are the permissions. So basically, this would be just a gist of permission. You would be having an entire session of permissions. But to put your things in right perspective or just for your information, the permissions are nothing but, you know, asking the user uh, about something. Like say if I want my application to send an SMS, can I just send him like that? No, 
I need to ask the user that this application or my application would be using your power to send SMS. Are you sure you want to allow me? I want my application to use internet. I do ask him. My application would be using internet. So now where do we get, see permissions? When you install the application for the first time, there you would be seeing the permissions. The permissions are the defining point that yes, my application will be doing this thing. Now, permissions can be of many types. Like if I'm using something like, like sending SMS, that we would be under user's permission. If my application is using some hardware like camera or Wi-Fi, then it would be in the permission and so on henceforth. So I think you would have got some idea what permission is all about. Now let's look into further things. Users SDK. Users SDK is the defining spot which defines that my application would be using which SDK or which would be the compiled version for my application. Then compatible screen and things like that. These are something which say that uh, what screen I would be compatible with. Like say I want my application to work only on tablets that are 10 inch in sizes. So I say that okay this should be the, this is a defining point. They are, these are secondary things which we use in the end of the course. But now let's look at those parts that we would be using very frequently in the starting only. So we start from application. Application can have anything like it can have an activity. It can have a activity allies. It can have a service. It can have a receiver. It can have a provider. Right. Now, what do we mean by this? As I've already shown in the previous slide, the activity was the point which is defining which is my activity. Activity is a Java class, it's a, it's a Java file which is defining. This activity can have intent filter, uh, action, category and data. By intent filter we means on what basis you want to filter our application. Okay, let me give you an example. Uh, like whenever you are clicking some web address or whenever you are clicking some phone number, that phone number actually calls up a dialer or it gives up a box which uh, like by saying by you know how do you want to do this action how do we do that because in intent filter we have defined that the category of this intent filter is nothing but dialing right so we do this over here in these tags now if i say that i am having three actions in my application like okay like i say i want to add an action over here i can't add it over here that's not a practice we have to write the similar tag with this and we gave the name over here so what I mean by this, if I'm having two actions that are there to be included, I simply do them, do them by having two tags. One tag won't serve the purpose. I can't add comma and add value over there. So after this, let's come to the service first. Service is nothing but the component which is running in the background, like my music is playing, things like that. So I will define the service over here. Receiver. Receiver is basically similar to activity, similar to service. We define what is my receiver name and then I define how do I want my receiver to get active. That is defined in the intent filter. Say I want my receiver to get active whenever receiving an SMS. Okay. And then is this one provider. Provider is something related to content like okay, uh, like which permission you want to grant and what is the data you want to include. These things are there in this provider. So after this, we can have some users library. Like if, if I want to add that, okay, my application uses some library, we can add that thing. And here we close on the application and we close on the manifest file. So this was about the tags in the manifest. Now let's have a quick recap of what all we have been through. So error manifest is uh, every application must have a file with this name in its root directory. That's very clear. It names the Java package for the application. The package name serves as a unique identifier. I have already told you, keep this in mind that you are not having the same package twice in your application. Then it describes the components of the application like activity services, broadcast receiver and the content provider. Make sure all the components that are there should be defined here. If the components are not defined here, then they would be not be able to launch and the, and the application will close down. It also declares the minimum level of Android API that, that the application is running on. Then it is the library that you are uh, linked against the application. And then it declares the permissions. I have already told you. All the permissions that are there can be included in this uh, XML or in this uh, manifest file. And the user would be able to use them. So that was all I think about the manifest file. Uh, manifest file is to brief up. 
is nothing but some uh, holder of the application the container which contains the entire application uh, summary what my application will have what permission will it use uh, and to uh, add this thing the permissions point that we are having would be covered up in the upcoming videos so that was all from my side in the manifest file in the next session we will be studying about the activities or the application first component application that is activity and its life cycle in detail thanks